guys, it's Christina Selena here reporting from two parts of the world. Today we'll be talking about universal design. <laughs> So what is universal design? Universal design is a term that has been kind of circulating in the architecture community really recently. And it's the concept that since you're designing everybody's environment, you're kind of designing the world around people, like the world around us is being designed by architects and that people have the right to experience that piece of architecture the same way, like everybody has the right to experience that building in the same way. So when you think about maybe like how that's not the case sometimes, because usually you're, people are like, what do you mean? How does like somebody not experience that building the same way? Well, if you have like a main entrance to the building and there's this like beautiful staircase up and you have this feeling of like climbing the mountain or whatever, and you get to the top and you've reached your goal and you're come entering the building, well, that's not accessible to everybody. So you're only giving people that can have the ability to climb stairs that experience, giving like kind of forcing not fully accessible people to go and take a different route into your building is kind of discriminating the, against right. those people. And I feel like this also happens with parks too. Uh, a good example of a park here in Philadelphia with universal design is Ray Street Pier. So yeah, there yeah. is one entrance to this park and as you enter it splits off. So on one side, it's just going straight, and on the other side, it, um, it kind of diverges, and then, and then it meets back up eventually, but on this side that diverges, it slopes down a little, and then it slopes up a little bit, so that, like, once this side is still going straight, it meets. And once you get to that point, it is this beautiful view of the Ben Franklin Bridge above and the water and like you you're looking across the Delaware River and you can see Camden and it's like a really nice uh, cityscape. When you think about like things like this where you think well that's just normal or like why do we care so much but it, when thinking about universal design it's not just about being fully able to um, enjoy the building it's also about some people segregate class in buildings, so in New York City as well as other cities like London, they actually made a law like you get some tax breaks if you put in low income housing in your building. So to do that, the clients have kind of made like a sneaky little plan where they would do um, really, really like fancy, fancy apartments with this beautiful lobby that you walk in from the main street and then you go up to your unit. And then the low income housing would be like from a side entrance and it's basically like a poor door. So like these people would come like from the side entrance and then go straight to their apartments from that entrance. And you really, really do not have the same experience um, for that building. And it's really discriminating and it still exists today. And I guess people are still talking about like um, whether to make that kind of illegal or not. And some cities still have those right. poor and doors. Right, they're just keeping the poor and the rich separate, as if, you know, like people are different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it also kind of creates like a tension between the residents in the same building, where like, obviously the people that pay more have like better maintenance, they have, you know, nicer things, and like a lot of low income housing, the maintenance isn't as great. And for instance, a light bulb will go out and be out for like months, Whereas the high income one, like that light bulb has changed like that. So people aren't getting the same service. People aren't getting the same experiences and kind of segregating people based on anything should be really not okay. And that's where universal design should be kind of adapted Everybody. by most mm -hmm. architects mm -hmm. or all architects. And not just architects because um, designers like across the board have the power to implement universal design. And when you think about accessibility, so a lot of um, buildings will have like the main entrance and maybe there's a step and 
maybe it's an old building that kind of was designed like that and they don't want to renovate. So they just put like around the corner another door with a ramp. And it's like, well, you're taking the person that has the hardest time getting around because these people can't go up the stairs and you're making them go even further and then into the building from the side entrance. It's like you're really not making it easier for people with like certain disabilities. And like really it should be our job to make life easier like as easy as possible for everybody and I guess another example of that is like in e almost every bathroom the stall that's the furthest away is the accessible st stall right um speaking of bathrooms it's really hard to get around in like bathrooms when every bathroom is oriented differently and every sink and soap dispenser and towel dispenser is different there's this youtuber called Molly Burke and she's a blind youtuber and her um, her goal of YouTube is just to spread awareness. And I think it's really like one of those things where um, you, you don't know that like certain things are more difficult or like the way you design isn't really convenient for other people. It's that same thing where like the soap dispenser, like if you're at the sink, usually the soap dispenser is kind of like within reach or right next to the, the um the faucet or something but if you put it like at a weird spot like a blind person's not going to find that and that's like you don't think about that when you're designing but really keeping things really um so like the same kind of makes it easier for um, person people with disabilities another example she had was um that she used to be a motivational speaker and she would like she didn't want to have her guide dog because she liked to have one hand free and she would go up the stairs and then onto the stage and it was always the same layout on so many stages where you just go up and you're on the stage but for some reason somebody decided to design this stage differently where you go up and then you turn and you go up the stage and like nobody told her that that one was different and she didn't know and she just walked straight off the stairs and like really injured herself just because like the designer like there was no hand there was no railing or anything like the designer didn't properly design that space. And I mean, that's, this is also an issue with uh, designers who just want to do the bare minimum to abide by building codes. So just because something is building code like approved, that doesn't mean that it also meets universal design. And uh, this also goes, this is a different topic, but this also goes the same for sustainability. Um, so now that we're moving forward, I do feel like they are, tr they are trying to uh, include like things like sustainability and universal design more into the building code so that um, more and more people will use it in their buildings. Yeah, so the laws are kind of catching up to the times, but it is kind of one of those things where all the existing buildings aren't being updated, so you still have like a huge number of buildings that aren't universally designed. Um, so for an example, actually, um, is, so there's like a... I have a favorite coffee shop in in Manhattan, and um, they it was owned by a design couple. Like the the woman, she went to architecture school and then interior design, and her husband would help her with designing like furniture products. And it was all like a really cool space. Like I guess it's like a geeky thing that architects like like a well designed space where there's coffee. And there's some like cool design, like lamp and some chairs that they're also selling. So um, like a few months ago, I walked by and the place was actually closed down. And the new owner, I had asked them like what had happened. And apparently somebody was going through the city. Uh, like, so there's like a step bef to get into the coffee shop. And so I guess there's a, they should have like a call button on the outside where you press so that you can alert the person inside so that they can help you come in uh, since your uh, establishment doesn't have like a handicap accessible way of getting in. So either they bring out like a temporary ramp since it's only one step and then you know you can roll on in or like they will help you some other way. So this, this coffee shop didn't have this button and so they got sued and then they shut down. So another example of um, how Accessible design isn't necessarily that universal is in 30th Street Station in Philadelphia that ramp up to um, SEPTA It is a legal ramp. It is fine like legally, but I mean 
at a few years ago, I tore my ACL and I was on crutches and I had a hard time actually getting up and down that ramp. And another example was like, I was going to the airport and I had a heavy suitcase and like when I was going down the ramp on my way back, it was actually like pushing me. Like I had, a, I had to like really fight back because the ramp is so steep. And I just imagine like people in wheelchairs must have like kind of a difficult time with this ramp that's actually completely legal, but like, why are, are we always designing for the bare minimum? Like, why don't we just make it universally easy for everybody right. to get around? This is just a small glimpse of how design impacts our everyday life and how universal design would be better uh, for us all. This is just one of the many examples of topics that we can discuss on our channel. In this video, we will talk about how design varies from country to country and how also the code and the laws vary. So if you want to see that video, make sure to subscribe to our channel. See you next time!